This is kind of a familiar setting. I work at a distillery in Pittsburgh. Yeah, and the other day, this girl comes in and says, I just turned 21, can I try your gin? Which I'm like, fuck, are you a sorority sister or like a 19th century English explorer? I'm off to colonize the Congo with my free samples of gin, yes. So I'm like, what, what makes you want to try gin? as your first, like, legal drink, and she goes, I love the Snoop Dogg song, Gin and Juice. <laughs> and she then followed it up with, do you know who Snoop Dogg is? <laughs> Folks, I understand I am almost 40 and covered in comic book tattoos. But, like, when missionaries come to your house and say, have you heard of Christ? They know you've heard of Christ. <laughs> it was such a baffling question. Like, my concerned grandmother knows who Snoop Dogg is. He's that nice hip hop fellow who taught Martha Stewart how to smoke jazz cigarettes in prison. <laughs> I know who Snoop Dogg is because he's a playable character in the PlayStation 2 fighting game, Def Jam, Fight for New York. <laughs> This is a game where you can throw a Flav of Flav in front of a moving train. <laughs> and because of the clock, you know the train is on time. <laughs> I know who Snoop Dogg is because I saw the trailer for Soul Plane. <laughs> I know who Snoop Dogg is because in, according to Futurama in the year 3002, his disembodied head is a Supreme Court Justice. <laughs> and probably making better rulings. I know who Snoop Dogg is because he's in every single film about pot. No, really, get the Criterion edition of the first Cheech and Chong movie, you can spot him in the crowd. Is this real? You're gonna IMDB it later, I know. The other day too, a, a friend asked me, um, so be, because you work with alcohol for your job, are you against pot? Which is such a baffling question. Like, no, I believe in killing my body with liquefied distilled corn, like an American. <laughs> I, I, I've tried it a few times, and um, I don't know if I have pot-resistant depression, <laughs> or just another bad set of genes. But the first time I tried to smoke pot, I'm at a party and my friend's like, hey, we're gonna pass a bowl around. I'm like, sure, I'll, I'll try it. Like, do I get to pick toppings? <laughs> Is this an ice cream bowl, a salad bowl? What, what are we talking about here? And I passed the thing around and I tried it and I felt nothing. So a few months go by and we get another party. I'm like, hey, we're gonna try it again. Do you wanna try it again? And I'm like, all right, fine. Cause like, if I'm gonna try something, I wanna be good at it. My mom is good at it. And so they said, this time, really, just take a deep breath and hold it in as long as you can. So I did that, and I went <laughs> And then I just started screaming, when does the burning stop? <laughs> Why would anyone do this for pleasure? I am part of a all stand-up comedians Dungeons and Dragons game. Shocking, I know. Uh, and they were passing around a vape pen the one session, so I was like, all right, I'll try the vape pen. And I did a few hits off the vape pen, and I never felt anything, and I started questioning my friends, guys, I don't feel anything. Is this working? How, what should I be feeling? What should I be doing? And then my friends, who are high as fuck, start questioning if they're high as fuck. <laughs> That's the kind of anxiety disorder I have. <laughs> that it is contagious. <laughs> I did a festival a few months ago in Portland, Maine, where all that stuff's legal. And my girlfriend came with me, and it's such a weird thing to get to the first show. They're like, hey, thanks for being part of the festival. Here's your goodie bag, it has weed in it. <laughs> and it was a, there was a big joint which I gave away, and there was this thing of 10 milligram uh, caramels. And unfortunately, uh, there's no suggested dosage. <laughs> so I thought, I'll text my D&D &D comedian friends. Hey guys, these are 10 milligram caramels. How much should I take? 
That started apparently a side conversation called the plan to get Zach Funk incredibly hot. <laughs> so the group consensus was I should take three. Oh, no. oh is that a lot? <laughs> I was unaware that that was a lot. My girlfriend, who was used to edibles, took four. And she was catatonic, just shaking in bed as MSNBC played in the background. I, on the other hand, thought, these caramels taste bad, as MSNBC played in the background. I felt nothing, it was so disappointing. Uh, my girlfriend also recently tried psychedelic mushrooms uh, and realized she was polyamorous. <laughs> I, I did not do psychedelic mushrooms and now no longer have a girlfriend. Because uh, it's one of the, it doesn't appeal to me, but also like even if it appealed to me, the math is not in my favor. I couldn't really pursue it if I wanted to, I think. But I don't. My sexuality, uh, the other year, my friend comes out to me and she's like, hey, pride is coming up you should come to Pride with me. I'm like, oh yeah, no, I'm great, glad to come support. And she's like, no, you should come to Pride with me. And I'm like, wait, am I getting outed to myself? What's happening here? And she goes, I think you're asexual. And I said, and I said well, what, what, what's that exactly? And she's like, well, you know how like street people prefer one and buy and pan people for a multiple? Uh, your option is none of the above. You're just gonna pass on the whole thing. And I thought about it for a bit, and I realized those things don't better apply to me. The terms that better apply to me are gray sexual or demisexual, but I don't like how those terms sound, because gray sexual sounds like I'm a Lord of the Rings sex wizard. <laughs> Behold, I'm zacked off the gray. Come back to my bed the magic only happens if I know you on a deep and personal level. <laughs> and demisexual sounds like demigods. Hercules, half man, half god. <laughs> so I am Zach Funk, half man, half sexual. <laughs> but I always have this weird feeling of like imposter syndrome being at Pride or be being on shows like this because other than having a low sex drive, I'm just a cis white dude. And no one's ever gonna, ever gonna like threaten me in a bar. <laughs> Being like, hey, I hear you're one of them types that's generally indifferent to fucking. <laughs> <laughs> we don't take kindly to you around here. <laughs> this is one of them old west towns where the whorehouse is our number one source of economy and you are hurting us by being here. There are problems though, when you have that, when you're in my situation, like there are no really good low sex drive slow jams. <laughs> like imagine this nice saxophone thing going. Burr, 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 burr. Oh, that's out of tune, hold on. Burr, 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 burr. Okay, fuck, it's broken. <laughs> hey there, I see you tonight, looking all like yourself. I know what you want. I've got what you need. And then a drum solo plays that is legally distinct from Phil Collins in the air tonight. <laughs> tonight we're gonna watch Doctor Who and order pizza. <laughs> oh, what's that? What's that, baby? You don't like Doctor Who? I'm sorry, this isn't gonna work. I am, however, while I am generally different to fucking, uh, I have uh, figured out I am what I like to call a cuddle slut. I don't care about sex, intimacy is great. Like sometimes I'll see somebody walking, be, walking by and I'll be like, oh man, I would so let them use me as a pillow. I am so god damned. Comfy. <laughs> I'm Zach Funk, thank you. Yeah!